Hello, welcome back to the Softworks YouTube channel. Today we got a little unboxing. Come across the Wheelie Bird 2.0 on a Facebook ad. Been looking for one for a while and uh, been kind of waiting on a sale. But come across the ad and it was it was priced right, so went ahead and picked it up. Okay. So I'm interrupting the start of this video. Go ahead and give you my final thoughts on this little unit. Keeping in mind, I still hadn't thrown a bird with it yet. So the packaging, packaging was great. It uh, had a plywood bottom in that box, plenty of styrofoam, all the metal parts individually wrapped in plastic. Nothing was scuffed. It, it all come out of the box nice. The instructions, they were printed nice, had some good pictures, pretty easy to follow. Yeah, they were good. So assembly, no big deal. Easy to do with your standard uh, standard tools you got in your house. So if you got two crescent wrenches, a screwdriver, and a pair of tenon locks, you're in good shape. So fit and finish, so far, I mean, everything was nice. The, the finish is nice. The parts look a good quality. Um, you know, for what you're paying and for what the machine is, you know, it's a easily portable by one person clay bird thrower so it's not one of the big heavy commercial units um it, it should it should still give you plenty of years of, of good fun so now for the bat all of this will be modified in a future video or we will come up with a solution to these issues in a future video first and foremost with that power cord it isn't long enough to reach a battery in your truck now i know they probably did it for a reason which is keeping you from running your truck battery dead in the middle of nowhere. But it would be nice if that cord was 10 or 15 foot long and you could hook it on there, you know, throw 25 or 50 birds real quick and should be fine. The second issue, if you want to call it that, the, the wireless remote control, the, the box itself that's attached to the unit, uh, we'll use attached loosely. Um, that's supposed to be attached to the unit with Velcro. That Velcro let go by day two. So uh, why that box doesn't have some, you know, little mounting tabs on it with some pre-drill holes that you could have, that could have been easily screwed, you know, right back to the back of the machine. Uh, I don't know why that isn't there. Well, like I said, we'll remedy that problem in the future though. And then the wireless remote itself, it doesn't have a place to attach a lanyard. You know, there's no no loop on it. I'm gonna have to glue something on there. It's something, it, it would just be nice if, if you could just have that sucker on a lanyard, just make it a whole lot easier than dropping it in a pocket or your shell bag or whatever. There'll be a second video on this. Like I said, I still have yet to try it. I'm not gonna modify anything until I take it out and physically try it. But yeah, that, that video, we'll, we'll trick her out some. I wanna, I wanna somehow figure out how to have onboard battery. I do want my power cord to be long enough to just hook to the truck if I want to or need to. I want a little storage box on there for the, the pedal and all the cord just to go in. I don't plan on using that a lot, but I'd like to, I'd like to keep it with the machine. And then that would also give me a place to store my remote and uh, whatever little odds and ends, little pieces um, to adjust the elevation on this thing, I gotta have a wrench. So it'd be nice to have that wrench on board. So yeah, that, that's what's coming up. I wanted to put this in the beginning of the video just to, I know some people might just be interested in that and that's it. And that's fine, you don't have to watch the rest of the video. Uh, rest of the video, just unboxing it, sticking it together, playing with it a little bit. Got some uh, pretty cool slow motion shots in there. Um, I don't have an actual slow motion camera, but pretty neat watching that sucker whip around slow speed. But uh, nothing else is worth fast forwarding to those parts. So we'll get back to it. Still brand new in the box. It is a little heavy, but not completely unmanageable. Kind of surprise you for the size of this box when you go to grab a hold of it though. So, uh, We'll uh, get to the good part, start unboxing it. It was sold to me as new in box. And it doesn't look like it's ever been out of there. So, 
Yeah, we'll get to the good stuff. So here you go, this is the actual box. That's gonna be so nice. This is pretty cool. Wireless remote. That's going to be awesome. This, I'm assuming, makes the hula hoop of death. We can figure that out later. Okay, so pretty obvious there's going to be some assembly required. We got a pretty good bag full of bolts and nuts and stuff. So we might need this at least to, uh, you know, look at the pictures. So the first picture shows assembling the cart. That's what we're going to start with. I'll dig up some tools and, uh, We'll get busy. So for tools, you're gonna get a 16 millimeter socket. Doesn't necessarily need to be a deep socket. A 13 millimeter socket and wrench. And I kind of got the hardware laid out, so that's your two axle bolts. That's gonna be for this frame. This is gonna be for your handle attachment. This stuff is gonna be to put the machine onto those holes. I think these are for the stands. Hadn't quite got to that point. These little E-clips are gonna hold the wheels on, I'm pretty sure. The next are washer, so I'm thinking it goes with this assembly here. But we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So do be careful about how tight you're getting it. You'll actually pull this uh, pipe down. It'll be all right. So you do have some options. You can turn the handle whatever direction you want it. Now, I didn't tighten these down too much in case I wanted to turn this. And I also put this bolt, I put the bolt back through this way just to make a little less snag point for when you're wrapping your wire up around the handle. Pretty snazzy orange wheels, they even got a bearing in there. I guess uh, set your offset however you like it. Okay, so I don't know if it's necessary, but uh, I found, went and dug around, found two old half inch washers. I'm gonna use these on the wheel. It didn't come with any washers for that, but I don't, I don't like this wheel spinning 
on just the little E clip. So, uh, so we're going to do that. I did have to get a pair of pliers. We're going to use this to squeeze that E clip on. it for the frame. All right, so next is these little guys. They go right there, and that's what your little hula hoop of death plugs onto. So we're going to install these now, and the uh, it's got wrench flats on there. But the uh, closest thing I could find between metric and standard is this. Yep, that's the only one that would fit it. So we're going to get these installed. We're gonna leave the rest of the parts of this off for now, just to keep it where we can get in there to hook the rest of the stuff up. So this though also comes with a pedal. I don't know how long this cord is, but you could, you could set back quite a ways. Um, if for some reason, the wireless one goes out on me or something. Still have this option. And now we're gonna we're gonna install the the bird hopper, I guess, or magazine, whatever you want to call it. That'll allow us to hold like 50 birds on this thing. This end's threaded. That ring goes around the top side. The other side, just pipe. These screws are just Phillips head. Okay, so now we're ready to, to hook up this mainspring. So I don't think this is under any tension, hopefully. Might be a little, let's see. Nope. Now I did actually read the instructions this time. So I said move this arm counterclockwise so it's facing the 12 o'clock position. So that little rod is where this mainspring hooks on to. Okay, so that's loose. <laughs> okay. And then this assembly, gonna go through this hole in the back here. I think I am going to add this washer on, like right there. All right, so that's a bit of a puzzle. This little black plastic bushing goes on. This side goes into the... So for now, I just snugged it up. I really don't have any tension on it. I'm just keeping everything in line.
Okay. So we made sure the switch is in the off position. We're gonna hook up the battery now. Funny thing is, they don't give you much room for the battery cables. All right, power's hooked up. It does say it's acceptable to dry fire this unit. So that's what we're fixing to do. We'll turn the switch to on and uh, squeeze the pedal. I made sure the cord isn't in the way of this throwing arm. Wow. That's sweet. That's off. Now we're gonna hit the release. We'll play with that little um, wireless remote here in a minute. Okay, well here's all the wireless components. It's a little 23A battery, the wireless remote. Something I gotta get better about and just something good to do. With any of your battery powered remotes, when you're not using this stuff, pull the battery out. And again, I'm saying this more for, for myself than anybody out there, but uh, uh, I cooked a power pole remote from a battery leaking in there and those batteries are expensive. So we're gonna try not to do that with this. Anyway, comes with some Velcro, little wireless remote, and it's just gonna go on probably right here on the back of the machine. This antenna does, this antenna does fold down, so I'll try and set it on there where when it's stowed away, it's not, nothing sticking up in the way. Got some nice steel plugs. All right, well, that was it for the installation. I mean, that's pretty simple to plug it in. Let me go uh, find a battery. You gotta learn, it's gotta learn the remote. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. Okay, so I think I got the clearance in the truck bed that we can run it and work it I hope <laughs> it's maybe more entertainment than we all bargained for all right so power's on we're gonna push remote learn We're just going to try a test fire and see what happens. Okay, must not have got it. Well, we cleared the truck bed, and I'm guessing we got a, a learned remote, so here we go again. Oh yeah. So, the wireless feature is why I really wanted this. It'll allow you to stand out and get chewed at oncoming birds. <laughs> Alright, so one of the things I like about this unit is that it's, it's got a timer on here and you can adjust this timer up to like 15 seconds. So I don't really go quite that long, maybe about half that. 
And uh, so what that does is you hit the button. It gives you a little time to get ready if you're shooting by yourself. Pretty, pretty neat feature. Just it a little slower. Hit the button. So when you go to shut it down, and I would recommend doing it whenever you're reloading birds or anytime you're around the, the front of it anyway. You go to off, and then it's got a momentary switch. So if you, the same switch, you just hit it down. I don't know if you can see that. Now it'll fire it one more time, but it won't come all the way back to the cock position. There you go. So you can still fire it. If you hit this switch down, it'll it'll bring it right back around. And fire it again. So be careful with that. Make sure you don't get a cord hitting that. All else fails, decock it and then hook, unhook your battery. That'd make it real safe to be around. We will be using this when we do go to shoot. Um, just as a, a soft reminder that anything inside of this ring is gonna hurt like hell. That's all I got. It uh, came by at the right time. Um, been wanting one for a pretty good while. This is the end of this video. It's unboxing slash assembly. Well, I get some time, we'll take it out and shoot it and do a, do a review and spend some time shooting some clay birds. One of my favorite things to do is getting to just spend the day shooting a bunch of clay birds. So we're gonna, we're gonna be giving that a shot as soon as I get a chance. Well, that's, uh, that's all I got on this one. We'll catch y'all later. <laughs> it might be too cold to get this on the day. <laughs> So it did come with a stake. Stake it right through there when you got it set where you want it. I don't know how important this is, but we'll uh, we'll find out in the next video. That's what it looks like with the safety guard. At least that'll kind of be a gentle reminder that you know this this spins around. So you damn sure don't want to get hit by that. Okay, we'll look at the instructions. Sorry, we got a dang washer. Mosquitoes. Ah, oh, dang, a double. I'm not going crazy, it's mosquitoes. <laughs>